power north from mainland Orkney to a colossal natural ocean powerhouse. It's called the Fall of Warness. There it is, look. Oh, yeah. But as we do, the ha, the sea mist, blankets everything. But then... It's like a sort of surface submarine, isn't it? Yeah, yes, I guess it is, yeah. From nowhere, the world's most powerful tidal turbine. A power station, but not as we know it. Yes. The mist clears and we find ourselves in the middle of power and energy on a scale beyond human comprehension. Muckle Greenham Island to one side, Edie Island to the other, and between the two, a trough of gigantic energy where the North Sea waters meet the Atlantic waters and every day around the clock, around the phases of the moon, millions of tonnes of water sweep through this chasm, producing endless, predictable, clean energy. Don't be fooled, it's not moving. It's the tide surging by on both sides. You have this sort of squeezing effect where, where that tidal stream is, is being well. forced between these yeah. two land masses. Yeah. And th that's why this is a really good spot to test this turbine. Half a billion tonnes of water at 10 miles an hour for six hours one way, half a billion, 10 miles an hour, six hours the other. Day in, day out, forever. This is two megawatt, which is around 2,000 UK houses. This could power 2,000 houses a year. 2,000 UK houses, yeah. This model can power a small town for a year, but the UK's biggest wind farm will power six million homes. The whole enterprise now faces major obstacles if it's to scale up from this prototype and play its part in the government's green energy revolution. So how does it work? Let's go down under these legs, where we find turbine blades on each leg. Think wind turbine but underwater, rotating in the push of the tide, and that is basically it. Unlike solar, unlike wind, the tides never stop. So come in, duck your head. And go inside the tidal generator, and it's a feast of British engineering. That's why it's roomier than I thought. Yeah, it's quite roomy. We were operating at 11,000 volts. Right. Three quarters of it all made in these islands, from Sheffield, Fife, and yes, Orkney. The hull sections put together in Dundee, the city's first shipyard launch in 40 years. Want to know what transitioning away from oil and gas to sustainable energy looks like in Scotland? It looks like this. And now there is the government's much vaunted GB Energy investment vehicle. So is this the kind of venture that should be spending your tax on? The boss of Orkney's Tidal Power Initiative is Andrew Scott. Well, the Labour government obviously is, is very early in its, uh, in its tenure, um, but I think there's a lot of hallmarks that it, it understands the challenge that's uh, ahead, uh, and it understands that it can be embraced for the industrial opportunity that it represents. And so I think uh, I've certainly got great hopes that we'll see not just a strengthening, but an acceleration of deployment of all renewables. But even he admits this is not a cheap option and it's taken 15 years to get them this far. From the turbine, undersea cables send tidal energy to the grid close by on the island of Edie. But here, they hit the great national grid problem. If you put, as you want to do, put an array of 10 of these in this area, then you could still get that power through the interconnector into, into the grid? Yeah, so right now we're limited in terms of, yeah. we're, we're okay with this, yeah. this, this two megawatt, yeah. but we couldn't have multiples, as you say, because you if there is it. that pinch point in the grid right now, so. So you yeah. need, it, to get to where you want to be, which is 10, you need a grid upgrade, don't you? Yeah, for Orkney in particular, we couldn't put 10 turbines right now. The old grid, simply can't take the new demands of emerging green power. But upgrade the grid and this prototype shows that much of this emerging industry, supply chain, technology, shipyard, it's all there, and a lot of it in Scotland. And the potential for global export is waiting. Our ambition isn't limited just to UK waters. We see applications of our technology all around the world. It will embed a supply chain and we'll be able to grow factories and capabilities and jobs here. And here in the UK, the second most powerful tides on planet Earth are waiting to switch our lights on.